Today the 12th of August of 2019, the news headline. Family Writers Trending Spotlight of the Week By Maxwell Chucks and Ellen Guy T9 MD Stephen for Family Writers Press International. Welcome to the first edition of Family Writers Press Trending Spotlight of the Week. On this edition, we will bring to you news headlines, brief details and reactions. First on Spotlight, we have Buhari is taking us back to the days of Abaka, that's according to Will Soinka. This he said while reacting to the arrest of Amoy El Zawar, the organizer of Hash Revolution Now protest. Just as Fulani herdsmen are busy raping, maiming and killing Nigerians, Northern Group has defended them again. This time, they said, Fulani herdsmen carry arms for self-defense. Huh. Same people that they had said do not carry arms. And the question remain, self-defense from who? Still on matters in Nigeria. Water bill is another Ruga in disguise, that's from Southern and Middle Belt leaders. During the week, they rejected the plot by the federal government of Nigeria to reintroduce water bill. Senators in the 9th National Assembly are divided over the plot to reintroduce the rejected water bill, which aside from making the federal government to be in control of water resources, would also make lands around the water resources to be taken over by the central government. Huh. Fulani herdsmen again. Guess what they did? They abducted a monarch and his wife in Enugu. This followed shortly after they killed a Catholic priest and attack one other Catholic priest in the same Enugu. Same people the federal government of Nigeria said are not terrorists. During the week, while Amoy El Zawar was still in DSS detention looking up to the ceiling, hash revolution now now protesters took to the streets of Lagos, but it didn't turn out well for them. Nigerian police, army, navy, civil defense and others joined hands together and deal mercilessly with them. It wasn't easy for the protesters at all. They were beaten, tear-gassed and arrested. And people started asking when did peaceful protest become a crime in a democratic country. Anyways we didn't reply them because we here on Spotlight Desk know not. El Zakziki after Nigerian police and soldiers murdered and arrest his followers, Shiites, during protests, court finally granted him bail to travel to India for medical treatment. In Niger, court slammed an Islamic Republic seven-year jail over annually sex with 35 pupils. Abomination Still in Nigeria, unknown gunmen attacked Kaduna during the week, kill a pastor and abduct his wife. A religious war? Vuuu. We arrived in Bainway where we meet Mayatiala. Guess what they did? They dragged Bainway state government to appeal court over anti-open grazing law. In fact, they were just like, why will you implement such law against Fulani herdsmen? Just as some hash revolution now protesters who escaped from the scene of the protest when security operatives landed on them were still feeling the pains, Nimti Kanyu the leader of the indigenous people of the African Dem they clamped down on the protesters. He lambasted President Muhammadu Buhari Jubral and others for the act. Still on hash revolution now protest. Buhari is taking Nigeria back to 1948, that's a statement by Femi Falana, S.A.N. Any protest against Buhari is undemocratic and unpatriotic, APC governors. And we asked what made anti-government protest undemocratic? Down we move over to Zamfara state where government did it again. As people were busy crying over the killings by Fulani herdsmen. The government freed 100 Fulani herdsmen from prison and grant them amnesty. Gau, your sins are forgiven that was how it echoed on our spotlight desk. I warned Southwest against supporting Buhari but they didn't listen, Chief Adbanjo cries out.
Nigeria is too difficult to govern, that's according to former head of state, Ibrahim Vabongida. And we screamed shoo. Back to the matter again. Ruga will help farmers and herders live together in peace, Governor Babagana tells Nigerians. <clears throat> Biafra, Kalibari declares support for Namti Kanyo, vow to achieve independence. The Kalibari National Assembly said they can't fight for freedom alone that's why they choose to support Mazi Namti Kanyo and Ipob in the struggle for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra. During the week as students who did well in their WAS examination were celebrating, Nigeria grabbed its own wonderful result. A report ranked Nigeria second in open defecation globally. Chai Buhari Media Group to Nigerians, blame Obasan Joe and Atiku for the poverty in Nigeria. And the blame game continues. Still on spotlight, Nigerian army and police trade words over murder of three policemen by soldiers in Taraba. Police reported that soldiers shot dead three policemen and freed a kidnapped kingpin. After failed attempts to deny the undeniable, the Nigerian army said we thought the policemen were kidnappers. In response, the Nigerian police said to army you are lying. The police also asked them six heavy questions which one is how did the kidnap kingpin escape with handcuffs? Till this moment, the Nigerian army is still silent. Still on the same matter. During the week, Nigerian soldiers killed vigilante in Atto's state and release arrested killer herdsmen. And people were asking, what is really going on in the country? APC are now treating Nigerians like a conquered people, PDP. Buhari is the best person to prevent our economy from collapse, Garbisha tells Nigerians who are seriously hungry. As insecurity is worsening every day in Nigeria, Wol Swanka cried out again. He said to government, declare state of emergency in Southwest. And we ask, is that the solution? Anyways let's watch and see. Everybody murdered in Biafra land will be avenged, IPOB say as they react to the murder of a commercial motorcyclist in Abba by Nigerian soldiers. Gen Gen. Still on insecurity. We have spent more than N300 million for the release of our kidnapped members, Can. Pray for the unity of Nigeria, Gbejb Amila tells Nigerians. As the wind of nationwide establishment of Ruga settlements for Fulani herdsmen is blowing in Nigeria, Bales' state government has stated its own position on the issue. The state governor, Siriaki Dixon said, We don't have an inch of land in Bales' for Ruga settlement, our land is for agriculture. Oh! Sorry to the disappointed ones. We move over to Bainway State again where the governor said that the state is still being pressurized by federal government to accept the controversial Ruga project for Fulani herdsmen. The state government also revealed that federal government spent over N2.2 billion for Ruga project. Huh. Speechless. On Nigeria politics matter. Presidency, let's abandon zoning. That's from Governor El Rafai of Kaduna State. The governor wants zoning abandoned. According to him, zoning is no longer sensible. <clears throat> Another 2023 game for the North. Let's watch and see. Atikwabubakar. Just as the man is still battling with Buhari in court over the 2019 presidential election and result declared by an ek. He has dropped another message to everyone living in the geographical area called Nigeria. He said, let's not divide Nigeria. He begged for unity, adding that Nigeria is an indivisible country created by God. As the week was about to fold its curtains, Zamfara state government dethroned an emir, a monarch, over his involvement in banditry. The matter was long o -a -u -u. They said the monarch works with bandits who terrorize and kill people in the state. Mayatiala again. 
following the cases of kidnapping and killings by Fulani herdsmen in Nanugu state, the group announced shutdown of their livestock markets in state. On the other hand, they also banned Fulani herdsmen whose family do not reside in southeast from grazing in the region. And we ask, will this end the killings and terrorism by Fulani herdsmen? During the week, as people were battling with the cases of murder of innocent people by police and army at checkpoints and other places, a soldier raped a student in Ondo State. In respond to the case, the Nigerian military said, We have handed the officer to police for prosecution. Huh. Wahula in the country. Islam is a religion of peace, avoid violent extremist ideas, Buhari tells Muslims. As long as they remain determined, serious and committed to freedom for the Ajutawa Republic and all oppressed nationalities trapped in Nigeria, they will have the unalloyed support of the Great Ipob. That is a message from Nimti Kanyu to Ujua groups. While people were busy saying and doing something fruitful, during the week, Ohan's Youth Council started begging northern groups for alliance ahead of the said 2023 Nigerian presidency. The group said Old Eastern Region Alliance with the North through proper understanding and cooperation, will produce one of the present Southeast governors and one present Northern governor, or former vice president or former governor or senator, depending on the choice of the North, will pair ahead of 2023. Chai. This reminds us of the old nursery poem, John Bull, my son I sent you to school but you don't know how to spell your name. Pray for Nigeria to overcome security challenges, guess who said this? It's the Eruwa Consultative Forum. They urged Nigerians to continue praying, praying and praying for Allah, God and ancestors to come down and end the killings by Fulani herdsmen and other security challenges. So wherever you are, close your eyes and continue praying. With this, we roll our curtain on this week's edition of Family Writers Press Spotlight. Join us on the next wonderful edition of Spotlight. If you are residing in Nigeria, don't be killed by Fulani herdsmen. Boko Haram and other killers including those in government. Stay safe.